So the end of the regular season has finally come. You know, we're getting ready for playoff time. And now is the time where we start talking about award winners from the regular season. I've already given you my thoughts on who I think should be the 2014 NFL MVP. Well, another award that has a lot of prestige to it is the Coach of the Year. So I'm here to kind of talk about who I think should win the 2014 NFL Coach of the Year award. And this is a year where I don't think there is a clear-cut winner. There's that one guy that deserves it way more than anybody else. I've got about five guys in mind that, again, similar to the MVP, where there were three clear-cut candidates above everybody else. And if any three of them won it, I would have no complaints whatsoever. I just maybe had a preference for one for specific reasons in DeMarco Murray. It's kind of similar to the NFL Coach of the Year. I think there are five candidates. Any one of the five, if they won that Coach of the Year award, I would sit there and say, you know what? Yeah, I could see that. Or I don't have much of a disagreement with that at all. So let me talk about those five nominees first and state the case for why they deserve to be Coach of the Year and then give you my choice for who I think should be the 2014 NFL Coach of the Year. I'm going to start off with Jim Caldwell of the Detroit Lions. I talked about it before the season that I thought he was the right hire. He was the perfect type of personality to lead this team. And I thought this team was going to have a nice little turnaround season in 2014. And they did. They go from 7-9 and nine and choking a, a potential division top crown and playoff appearance down their leg last year to going 11-5 making a four-game improvement, and making it to the playoffs and even having a chance to win the NFC North in Week 17. I mean, Jim Caldwell got this team to the playoffs, and a lot of people didn't envision that. I thought this could be a team that would win 10 games this year, sure, but Caldwell led the Lions to a season that I didn't even anticipate. They still have their Lions moments, don't get me wrong, but he deserves a lot of credit for getting more out of this organization, getting more out of this team and putting them in the spot that they're in. I look at Bill O'Brien of the Houston Texans. Here comes a guy from Penn State. You're never really sure when a guy transitions from college to the NFL how it's going to go. You're talking about a 2-14 and Texans team that we knew had some talent there, but definitely had a deficiency at quarterback and still was 2-14 and for reasons outside of just the quarterback position. And in particular, when you look at the fact that their number one overall pick, Jadavion Clowney, produced nothing in 2014, you would think that that would be a recipe for disaster in a four or five win season. Well, it didn't happen under Bill O'Brien. The Texans go from 2 and 14 in 2013 to 9 and 7 in 2014, coming this close to a playoff appearance, all the while being quarterbacked by his legends and studs like Ryan Fitzpatrick and Ryan Mallett and hell, even what Case Keenum. Exactly. They went 9-7 and seven with those scrubs at quarterback. Bill O'Brien deserves a tremendous amount of credit for the coaching job that he did. I look at Bruce Arians and the job that he did in Arizona. There wasn't a huge dramatic improvement from one season to the next. I mean, they went 10-6 and six last year, missed the playoffs. This year they went 11-5 and five and made the playoffs. But at one point in time, they were 9-1. and one. They had the best record in the National Football League. This was a team that didn't have Darrell Washington, their stud inside linebacker, all year. They didn't have uh, a very good 3-4 defensive end in Darnell Dockett all year. So two big-time defensive stars, and you could even maybe argue a third in John Abraham. Those are three big-time defensive players for that Arizona Cardinals team where they have a defense-first type of mentality and identity that weren't involved at all this season, and yet that Arizona Cardinals defense was still one of the best units in the National Football League. And then even on offense, he went without Carson Palmer as starter for a good portion of the season. And even at one point in time, lost Drew Stanton as backup, so he's going down the, the third quarterback route. He lost Andre Ellington, his best playmaker out of the backfield, to injury. And yet they still found a way to go 11-5 and in one of the toughest divisions in football and make the playoffs. Bruce Arians deserves a ton of credit. Definitely beyond question based off of what we've seen the past three years. He is one of the best pure coaches in the National Football League, and I don't think there's any dispute about that. Another guy that I don't think is getting near the attention that he should is Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look. I've been hard on the Steelers the past few years. And frankly, as an organization, they've kind of merited that, earned it, and deserved it. But I cannot dispute that Mike Tomlin did a hell of a job with the Steelers team this year. The AFC North may have been the toughest division in all of football, 
and the Steelers found a way to win that division, go 11-5. and five. I mean, that was a nice improvement from 8-8 eight and eight the season before. Not only do you make the playoffs, but you win your division. You get a home playoff game with a defense that was less than stellar. I mean, Tomlin deserves a lot of credit. I think, frankly, he would get even more credit, and he might be the runaway winner of this award if they wouldn't have lost games to teams like the fucking Jets, the Buccaneers, and the Saints. It's one of those things that have plagued them as an organization for years, is being able to beat really good teams and really pissing it down their legs against really crappy teams. And that played out again here in 2014 to a degree. Again, they lost to the freaking Bucks, who had the number one overall pick. They lost to the Jets, who had the sixth overall pick. They lost to the Saints, for God's sakes, a 6-10 and 10 team. They lost all three of those teams. You can't do that, typically, and expect to be able to make the playoffs, but the Steelers found a way to do it this year. And then I think you got to go to Jason Garrett. You talk about a coach under siege. This is a coach without even having a long-term contract in place. A coach coming off of several straight eight and eight mediocre seasons. And we were all envisioning that that was going to be the high watershed mark for this club in 2014 was they were going to go eight and eight. And a lot of people, myself included, understandably so, thought that this was a Cowboys team that was due for an implosion similar to what happened with the Bears, and they were going to win four or five games and things were going to get really ugly and Jason Garrett was going to be shown the door. Well, that didn't happen. We all maybe thought and envisioned for the most part that the Eagles were going to win that division and win it handily, and it was the Cowboys that ended up handling business. They went 12-4. and four. They won the division, so that's a four-game improvement. You know, they had tied for the best record in all of the National Football League. This close to getting a first-round bye and even home field advantage throughout the playoffs, a team that went into Seattle and beat the Seahawks. The Cowboys had a hell of a season. And when you look at Jason Garrett, like I said, this was a coach that looked like he was on as hot of a seat as damn near anybody, a coach that had had three straight mediocre seasons, and now he's got the Cowboys in a prime position where they look like contenders in the NFC. With all of these things factored in, and you're looking at the different candidates again, if any of these five won the award, I would be okay with it. I really, really, truly would. However, I am going to gravitate towards one individual, and I can't believe I'm actually saying these words out of my mouth, and I'm almost starting to sound pro-cowboy in a way, but again, I've got to give DAP, I've got to give credit where credit is due. My personal choice for head coach of the year in the NFL in 2014 is Jason Garrett. When we look at the Dallas Cowboys, it wasn't like they made dramatic roster improvements in the offseason. You know, we thought this defense was going to be historically bad. We thought that this offense was going to have its moments where it put up a lot of points, but it failed to make the big important plays when it needed to. We thought this team was due to fall apart, was going to implode, and going to be just flat out bad. And they did anything but. They got off to that hot start, and they managed to maintain their momentum throughout the season. The biggest reason I give Jason Garrett the uh, Coach of the Year award is because it takes a hell of a coach to understand that the previous way that you've been doing things that you maybe thought was right was the wrong way to do things, and you acknowledge that, you accept it, you own up to it, and you make the type of necessary changes, not because you want to be right, but because it's the right thing to do. And he did. There was a major philosophical change in the play calling of the Dallas Cowboys. They emphasized the running game. They went off of their strength, which was their offensive line with three former first-round picks. They pounded the rock with DeMarco Murray left, right, up the middle, down your throat, and up your ass. It took pressure off of Tony Romo. It opened up things on the outside for Des Bryant. Most importantly, it kept the Cowboys' defense off the field. For those reasons right there, with that philosophical change and the results that it bore out for the Cowboys in 2014, for my money, the one candidate that stands out above the rest, the one coach that stands out above the rest and should be the 2014 NFL Coach of the Year has to be Jason Garrett of the Dallas Cowboys.